All right, hello everyone. I'm Dr. Tushar Mehta, orthopedic surgeon and your faculty of orthopedics. Well, today I'm going to have a long discussion with all of you in this video about a particular topic. Let's first take an MCQ from that topic. All our features of Paget's disease except A. Defect in osteoclast B. Calcitonin is the drug of choice, can cause deafness, can cause osteosarcoma. I think most of you have guessed it right by now. Answer is B. Calcitonin is not the drug of choice. It is the bisphosphonates. That's one statement which is not true. A. Defect in osteoclast. Yes, it is. There is an excess resorption, there is an excess formation, so there's a defect. It can see can cause deafness, yes. Progressive sensory neural hearing loss happens. We'll talk about that. D can cause osteosarcoma. Yes, it is a premalignant lesion for secondary osteosarcoma. We'll talk about that. So presenting to all of you Paget's disease of the bone. Uh, also called as osteitis deformance because there are multiple deformities that happens in bones along with you know inflamed and a mixed picture kind of presentation is there. This term was uh, initially described by Dr. James Pidgett in 1877 also called as as I said osteitis deformance. Basically I want you to understand that it is a high turnover bone disease. Now when I say it's a high turnover bone disease what does that mean that osteoclast in this disease has a tremendous amount of potential of resorption but at the same time don't worry uh, osteoblast also has a tremendous amount of potential for formation so technically you have an excess formation you have an excess resorption and that leads to you know multiple deformities and thickening of the bone and further on uh, most common bone in world is always pelvis the central skeleton, axial skeleton is usually preferred. Uh, pelvis is followed by tibia, then femur, then skull. Well, I have seen a couple of people who have this wrong information that skull, no. Pelvis, tibia, femur, skull, spine, clavicle. But I'll be very honest, anyone can be involved. Of course, the most common one will always remain. Pelvis. As we have understood the um, the pathogenesis behind the disease, that you know there is too much of formation, too much of resorption. So technically, disease will be divided into three stages, three phases. Too much of resorption phase is the lytic phase or the clastic, as they say. Uh, too much of formation is the blastic or the sclerotic phase, as they say. And third one definitely will be a combo pack where you have a mixed picture, blastic as well as lytic. When I say mixed picture. It is a very typical term which is classical of pagers that is what is called as mosaic pattern. I am um, sure you might have heard of jigsaw puzzle, you have heard of mosaic pattern, mixed pattern because at certain areas you will see under a microscope in the bone you will see too much of formation, too much of osteoid and at another point you will see too much of resorption cavities, the pits, the lacunae. So, so technically you see a thick and trabecular system on one side, on another side you see just empty spaces with a fibrovascular uh, you know stroma so the mosaic pattern is a very typical mcq associated with pigeons uh, mosaic pattern jigsaw puzzle as you know you prefer to call it i have shown you too much of plastic activity too much of plastic activity now i'm coming to the clinical crux of this topic so if you go through any standard textbook of uh, orthopedics within UG and PG you will find this line written often that any 40 plus asymptomatic male with an incidental diagnosis of 8 to 10 times elevated level of alkaline phosphatase is the biochemical hallmark for patients. <clears throat> Two things I want to mention. There's some study which mentions that almost uh, 15 to 25 percent of the people worldwide globally they suffer from pagets and they never even come to know about it please try to understand that majority of the people of pagets they always remain asymptomatic throughout their life it's just that they go for a health checkup or routine checkup in which their liver function is testing is done and in that lft they see normal sgot sgpt ggt bloody everything is normal except for alp which is elevated to eight times ten times normal values around 40 to 140 you will see people in their thousands 1140 something like that 
five Ps. <laughs> if you want the summary of this topic, although we are not over with the topic, it is still pending. But if you want a summary of this topic, I, I can address that in the form of five P, where the most common bone in the world is P for pelvis. The first symptom is always P for pain in the back, back pain. It is the most common pre-malignant lesion for secondary osteosarcoma. Uh, progressive sensory neural hearing loss happens because of the cranial nerve compression. You can very well imagine in the plastic phase there is too much of formation which reduces the diameter of the lumen of the cranial foramen and thereby producing cranial nerve compression out of which vestibular cochlear is a common one. And the fifth P uh, I want you to remember is paramyxovirus, some connection to the paramyxoviridae family. So these are the classical five Ps. Now, complications, as I've already mentioned, deformities, thickenings, fractures, arthritis, nerve compression, particularly in the blastic phase, when, whenever there's a phase of excess bone formation, nerve root compression, cardiac vena compression, common. Skull issues, definitely common, you know, very, very common. Uh, secondary osteosarcoma, I've already mentioned that. And uh, even high output cardiac failure is noted because of the increased vascularity, you know, high output failure. So there's too much of vascularity and the heart is not able to take that load and that leads to HOCF. Now, I'm coming to a bit surgical point, like when we are dealing with a patient of pigeons. Okay, I operate karna hai. patient has pigeons. We have to take care of probably of three things. Number one, it starts, the problem starts with anesthesia, with spinal anesthesia, epidural anesthesia. It becomes very difficult to negotiate the spinal needle inside because of too much of bone thickening. Second thing, even the bones are thick, but they are deformed, they are structurally weak. So chances of hydrogenic fracture becomes very high. And the third thing, I've been there, I've, I've faced that, a profuse bleeding. Why? Because of a highly vascular bone marrow. There's a very high amount of fibrovascular stroma, as I've shown you in the histology also. So these three things we find difficult. We, we find complications like introduction of the spinal needle. Then, of course, you have to deal with wounds in a very uh, fragile manner. And, of course, profuse bleeding. Investigations, to be honest, all the markers of bone formation and bone resorption, but uh, one classical vacuumly hallmark that is 8 to 10 times elevated level of alkaline phosphatase. And of course, after that, proline, hydroxyproline, deoxyperidinoline, c tyropeptide, and tenopeptide. All these resorption markers will be elevated for sure. Uh, I'm coming to a very important aspect of pagets now, which is the radiology of pagets. So I'll be discussing some six, seven important x ray signs I want, you to, I want you to please focus. So if you can see here, I'm sure you'll be able to make it out that there is a crack, there is a fracture, although it's an incomplete unicortical fracture in the anterior cortex of the tibia because this is a lateral view. So you're able to see tibia, you're able to see fibula. So there's an incomplete unicortical break in the anterior cortex of the tibia as seen on the lateral view, usually in the diaphysis. So radiology people looked at it and probably, you know, they imagined something and gladly they imagine only banana and they said it's banana fracture. The second X-ray sign is a very interesting sign, brim sign. So pelvic brim is made by a line called as iliopectineal line. Let me just show you the iliopectineal line. Please take a look. This is the iliopectineal line. On this side, iliopectineal line is normal. If you look at it, the iliopectineal line on the opposite side, it is quite thick and sclerotic. So unilateral thickening of the iliopectineal line as compared to the opposite side is called as brim sign. That's the second X-ray sign after banana fracture. The third one is something that we see often in skull, osteoporosis circumscripta. Some people call it osteitis circumscripta. It doesn't matter. Bottom line is well circumscribed osteoporotic patch in the skull. I'm sure you all can see that. I'm sure you all can see that well circumscribed osteoporotic patch in the skull is something that I'm sure you all are able to see. Now, the next X-ray sign is cotton wool skull. Guys, please look at the thickening of the outer table of the skull. I'm sure you will be able to appreciate that. Along with that, you see these white spots, white fluffy spots, just like a cotton wool. Again, I'm showing you the same X-ray of osteoporosis circumscripta, just to reiterate what I have said earlier, well circumscribed osteoporotic patch. Tam O'Shenter, they say that Tam O'Shenter is the name of a cartoon character who had an excessively protuberant frontal bone. I'm sure you all will be able to see this excessively protuberant frontal bone. I'm sure of the exactly. So this excessively protuberant frontal bone that you all can see here is basically with a depressed saddle nose. So this is what you call as 
टेमो शेंटर साइन सो एक्सेसिवली प्रोड्यूबल फ्रंटल बोन इज कॉल्ड एज टेमो शेंटर साइन यू हैव द पिक्चर फ्रेम स्पाइन एंड आईवरी वर्टिब्रा सो द स्पाइनल फीचर एंड पेरियड्स आर ऑफ टू टाइप्स सो गाइज सुपेरियन प्लेट इज थिक एंड डेंस इनफेर एंड प्लेट इज थिक एंड डेंस सो इज द इंटीरियर सो इज पोस्टीरियर सो ऑल फोर एंड प्लेट्स आर थिक एंड डेंस लिविंग बिहाइंड एन एम टी स्पेस फॉर अ फ्रेम सेकेंड थिंग इज एन इज इज अ प्लश वाइट वर्टिब्रल बॉडी दैट इज वॉट वी कॉल एज आईवरी वर्टिब्रा coming to the last one i'm sure you can see the femur you can see you can see this translucency can you see this translucency this is a conical shaped translucency with a with a, with a broad apex and a narrow base so it feels as if you know some flame has come up in the bone or maybe some candle has come up or maybe some blade of grass is there so this represents the phase of resorption so to summarize the x-ray signs the first one is okay we'll, we'll start from this the blade of grass or the flame sign second one is the cotton wool skull third is the osteoporosis circumscripta fourth is the banana fracture fifth is the tamashenter sign sixth is what do you call as the brim sign and seventh is basically the pitcher frame spine and of course ivory vertebra uh after x ray we go for another investigation bone scan usually it shows increased uptake wherever there is a high osteoblastic activity the differential diagnosis first osteomalacia age is important in osteomalacia younger age group this usually happens in 40s and 50s in osteomalacia will have decreased vitamin d and serum calcium here you will have more or like more or less serum calcium normal in osteomalacia you don't see this much more bone thickening here you do see fibrous dysplasia second differential diagnosis particularly because of the candle flame sign or that one thing with sign particularly but of course there are multiple other dds for that multiple myeloma osteoporosis again you can differentiate because of the different phases of the disease treatment uh if majority of the people are asymptomatic where do you want to test them you know asymptomatic people are just like sleeping lions so they just come they sleep they go away why to touch them so technically inactive lesions do not require any intervention i mean let's keep silent <clears throat> bottom line i'm going to tell you now when we plan a patient of patients who is symptomatic we uh, try to take care of a few things out of which number one we have to suppress the the, the active disease which is lytic plastic sclerotic whatever second thing we have to take care of the pain third we have to prevent the deformity and fracture fifth we have to take care of the cardiac function sixth we have to ensure that it is not going into the sarcomatous changes well bisphosphonates have always been called as a drug of choice uh people have been talking about pemidronate lutronate alendronate risidronate you ask me personally zolendronic acid zolendronate 5 mg intravenous over a period of about 40 45 minutes and believe me it is the first choice this is the best choice apart from that you can give other calcium supplements and all but bisphosphonates will always remain the drug of choice and normally it takes about 6 to 9 months for a bisphosphonate to work and bring alp levels normal and be be very careful with the people with poor kfts second drug is calcitonin uh again a wonderful drug uh, available in the form of an intranasal spray you can give a cim as well and uh, to be very honest with you it is the drug of choice for pain relief in patients take it main uska ye advantage hai then surgical treatment if there is a deformity or if there is a fracture or if there is a arthritis or if there is a spinal compression and uh, pre or post op calcitonin certainly helps calcitonin is an amazing drug by the way so there is one case here which is mentioned and you know this person came with a lot of backache and a 61 year old female if you can see some you know part in uh, the extra also it is written so 61 year old female with thickening of the bones with periostitis she comes to you and you see you know how the right hip has been compromised and on the right side you can see an extensive thickening extensive diffuse uh, thickening of the entire bone and, uh, you can see some protrusion as well uh, alp is 1510 amazing 10 times otherwise rest of the things are fine they are normal so classical answer pages so guys i think uh, with this we have had a decent coverage of this topic pages and now if you can see this question then defect in osteoclast 
Yes, calcitonin is a drug of choice. No, it is a drug of choice. It's not overall drug of choice. It is a drug of choice for pain relief. Can cause uh, sense in neural hearing loss deafness due to vestibular cochlear nerve compression. Yes, can cause osteosarcoma. Of course, it is one of the most. It is the most common pre-malignant lesion uh, of. Uh, secondary osteosarcoma, all the incidence of conversion is almost 1%. So, answer is B. So, with this, not only we discussed the <coughs> MCQ, but also a, a wholesome topic, patients in detail, right from its etiology to pathogenesis to pathology to clinical features to diagnosis to treatment and do's and don'ts. I hope this video helps you for a very, very interesting and important topic, Pager's disease of the bone. I wish you all the best and stay tuned to the channel for more uh, orthopedic uh, subject updates and videos. Do like, share and subscribe. I wish you all the best. Thank you.